There's a lot of advice about how to live a healthy life, and it's important to be aware of it, because a lot of diseases are caused by our lifestyles rather than pathogens. These are called non-communicable diseases, and that's what we're learning about today. A great way to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmathetici.com. Non-communicable diseases are ones that aren't infectious. This means they can't be transmitted from person to person. These diseases cause 71% of deaths globally which far outweighs the number of deaths caused by communicable diseases, at just 29%. Both of these diseases, not just communicable diseases, apologies, affect the individual, their family, which is supporting them, and their country. Countries spend huge amounts of money trying to treat ill people. And not only that, it affects the global economy, because people who are ill aren't able to contribute to the workforce. What's crazy about these diseases is that most of them are preventable, as they are caused by some lifestyle factors, like smoking or a lack of exercise, or they can be caused by substances in the person's body or environment, for example, UV light that comes from the sun. Lifestyle choices and substances that increase the risk of disease are called risk factors. They increase the rate of disease incidence, which just means how many people have the disease. Now, sometimes there is a correlation between something like a lifestyle factor and a disease. For example, here the number of ice creams eaten per 100 people increases, as does the incidence of sunburn per 100 people. But just because there's a correlation doesn't mean there's a causation. We know that eating ice cream doesn't make you sunburnt. It just so happens that eating ice cream and getting sunburnt both happen on sunny days. To find out if certain factors really cause diseases, doctors and scientists need to do a lot of research to understand the biological mechanism causing this. When this is proven, we call it a causal mechanism. A causal mechanism has been proven for some risk factors, but not in others. There are six proven causal mechanisms that you need to know. The first is cardiovascular disease, which has the risk factors of diet, smoking, and exercise. A poor diet can increase the levels of blood cholesterol. Smoking can increase the blood pressure and damage the lining of the arteries. And a lack of exercise can lead to a buildup of fatty deposits in the arteries. Type 2 diabetes can be caused by obesity. The result of this is the body stops responding to an increase in blood glucose levels, which is dangerous. Liver and brain damage are both caused by alcohol. This can cause liver cancer and cirrhosis, which is scarring of the liver. It can also cause brain damage, which stops the brain functioning properly even when sober. Lung disease and cancer are both caused by smoking. Tar is a carcinogen and it turns the lungs gray and increases the risk of lung cancer and damage to the fetus is caused by both smoking and alcohol. The results of this can be a low birth weight, a premature birth, or even a stillbirth. This is when the baby is born dead. Now, cancer is something you're gonna learn about in the next video, but for now, you just need to know that it's an uncontrolled cell division. It can be caused by carcinogens in a person's environment, including ionizing radiation, like UV light from the sun, and radioactive metals like uranium. It can be other substances as well, like tar, or possibly even an excess of red meat in the diet, which is linked to bile cancer. Many non-communicable diseases are caused by multiple factors interacting, so it can be hard to find a causal mechanism. All right, let's see what you've understood. Pause the video and try these questions, and when you're ready, just press play to mark them. Ready? One, match the risk factor to the disease. Well, obesity can cause type two diabetes. 
Alcohol consumption can cause brain damage. Smoking contributes to lung cancer. And inactivity or lack of exercise causes CHD. Two, researchers were examining how well BMI and waist to hip ratio indicate the risk of developing coronary heart disease in men. Using the graph of their results, which factor would you advise doctors use and why? Let's start by looking at the key. BMI is in yellow and waist to hip ratio is in red. So we'll start with BMI. We can see when there is a low quartile of BMI that seven men develop coronary heart disease per thousand men. The medium quartile, however, has dropped down to around six men. Then it increases again for the high quartile or high BMI, but then it sort of stays the same for the very high BMI. This isn't a very strong correlation between BMI and CHD. Now let's look at the waist to hip ratio. When it's low, we can see that there's a low number of men with CHD, and when it's medium, it has increased to nearly six. For high, we've got a big increase up to nearly nine men with CHD, and it continues to increase for a very high waist to hip ratio, reaching nearly 10 men with coronary heart disease. This is a strong positive correlation as the numbers continue to increase each time. So I would advise doctors to use the waist to hip ratio because there is a stronger positive correlation between increasing waist to hip ratio and men with CHD. Notice I'm using the exact language given to me in the graph. On the other hand, BMI has a weaker relationship and the medium quartile actually has a lower number of men with CHD than the low BMI quartile. You could also have mentioned that the high and very high BMI quartiles are almost the same. Okay, how did you do on the questions? In the next video, we're learning about a big disease. It's cancer. Click here to watch it. And if you find this video useful, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.